Hey everybody, it's Dredrick, and we're doing an auto commentary for a uh, very interesting game uh, between Lucifer and Lyot in the Doyu Thunder Fire Cup. It's a dope name for a tournament if I've ever heard one. So, I'm uh, going to be taking a look at this from Lucifer's perspective, put the build order up on the screen here. Uh, he's going to be going Crypt Altar into a Ziggurat after that before making his fifth Acolyte. Uh, and then uh, he's pretty much going to be going Ghouls as the opening, which is very standard against Night Elf, and uh, going into a Fast Tech all the way up to Tier 3. Uh, the Night Elf, on the other hand, is going to be going for the dreaded Keeper of the Grove Alchemist with Mass Fairy Dragons. So, yeah, look out for that. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to play against that, what to do against that, and uh, how Lucifer gets the win. So the map is Twisted Meadows, which is a very interesting map. Um, you have a lot of powerful creeps here, right? These red camps drop really powerful items. And uh, the Goblin Labs over here also drop uh, a bunch of aura items, right? So you can get, uh, you know, Scourge Bone Chimes, you can get the uh, Mana Bong, you can get uh, all the all the level 1 aura items. Um, so it comes into play in this game uh, a decent amount. So because Twisted Meadows is a 4-player map, uh, Lucifer is going to open with a Double Scout. You see the Ghoul going off this way, and down here you have an Acolyte uh, who's going to be going down this way. Um, this is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but... Uh, you know, to high level play, knowing where your opponent is, is, is really going to help inform what you're going to do. And it's going to pay off for Lucifer um, quite a bit, actually, as we'll see. In his base, meanwhile, he's just going to keep making some ghouls and uh, getting his Death Knight out. So, uh, he's about to scout the Night Elf base, and we're going to take a look at how much information he gets from this. He's going to get a lot. First of all, you're going to see that the Ancient of War is just going up. At a minute and 30, if you the, your Undead Crypt is done. You've got ghouls coming out. So if the Night Elf is only just now putting up his Ancient War, that basically tells you he's going Huntresses. And in fact, if we undo the Fog of War real quick, you can see the Huntress Hall is right down here. So that means uh, a couple things. One, it means that he's not AOW creeping, so the Death Knight does not have to go harass the Night Elf. And two, it means that that Night Elf is going to take his Keeper, and he's going to run it straight the fuck up to your base to try and harass you. Because he has no units out, so he can't do anything else. So Lucifer's response is, uh, he says, all right, fuck this. I'm just going to go ahead and take my Death Knight, and uh, I'm going to go creep somewhere else. So he's going to go uh, solo creep the DK and hide away. Um, meanwhile, in his base, Lucifer's going to put up this Nerubian Tower so the Keeper can't run in and just kill his uh, Acolytes. You do want to protect your Acolytes while you're doing this. Um, Nerubian Tower is the best way to do it. So uh, solo creep up this Death Knight. You basically just throw a coil on something, get some skeletons from a creep, preferably, which uh, is what Lucifer did. And you want to try and stay away from the Keeper. You want to hide from it so he can't harass you too much. Um, fortunately, if you look at the Keeper, he doesn't do much damage. He's an intelligence hero. So your Death Knight, you can out-damage him pretty easily. So if you're even slightly careful, he's going to get this, and he's going to deny both these skeletons. So the Keeper's not going to get any experience off of this, uh, this whole debacle over here. But if we take a look at what the Night Elf is doing, at three minutes, he's going to go ahead and already put up an expansion. Uh, this is pretty standard for Night Elf. Um, Lucifer's looking for it. He's got his Acolyte scouting over here in the corner. This is a pretty common place. In fact, if you look where the expansion is, this is exactly where his Acolyte scouting, just at the wrong base. Uh, this is just something about Twisted Meadows that the, the Night Elf can kind of hide expansions from you. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Um, you just try to scout him. So meanwhile, Lucifer in his base, uh, he's still just now teching to tier two, but he does have some ghouls. So he's going to go ahead and start multitask creeping. Um, his Death Knight's going to come in here and try and harass some Wisps and uh, scout out the Night Elf. Uh, kind of check out what he's doing and just harass him. Um, any Wisps you can kill while he's teching is going to be nice and helpful. Uh, it also means that the Night Elf is not going to be able to go ahead and take the couple Hunters he has and starts creeping. So the uh, Keeper is going to be stuck on level 1 for a while here. Uh, the Ghouls, meanwhile, what he's gonna, what you're going to want to do with this is go find an orange or a green camp and uh, attack it with the Ghouls, kind of depending on your competency. You should be able to deal with orange camps, like the weaker ones, like these 3-5-3 nulls, pretty easily. Which Lucifer is. Um, one thing to note is you really cannot afford to lose any ghouls while you're doing this, right? Um, Lucifer, of course, doesn't lose any here. But the thing is, when you get to tier 2, you have like a thousand gold worth of things you need to spend your money on. So you can't afford to be replacing ghouls at this point in the game. Um, so just make sure you don't lose any. If you're not ready to take on an orange camp, maybe just go for a green camp if you're not sure. Uh, Lucifer, meanwhile, is going to come back into the Night Elf base because uh, he doesn't really need his Death Knight for anything. He's already kind of used up his Ghoul's HP, um, and he needs some Lumber for Tier 2 anyway, so they're going to go back to the base and get some more Lumber. He's going to come around and just kind of check up on what the Night Elf is doing, and he's really looking for this expansion at this point. He kind of wants to know what the fuck's going on. 
So since his death knight's going to stay out on the map a little bit, uh, he's going to go ahead and pick up a staff of teleportation. This is something that you want to do anytime that you are against the keeper, because uh, at this point the keeper has some huntresses out. So if you get into a point where you're fighting against this keeper, he can entangle you and surround you and you're going to have to TP. Uh, the staff, however, prevents that because as soon as you get entangled, you can just staff back to your base. And uh, it lets you stay on the map versus the keeper uh, relatively safely at this stage in the game. So now Lucifer's kind of checking out what's going on, you know, he's got skeletons checking the expansions. Um, and uh, we've got a point now where the undead has just hit tier 2. And I have a shopping list for you when you hit tier 2 with undead, right? Now there's three things that you need to buy basically every game when you get to tier 2. If you notice, uh, the first thing he actually got here was tier 3. Normally you would start your Lich uh, as your first item at tier 2, um, which he will in a minute, he just doesn't have the gold. Normally you're going to start your Lich first, but uh, Lucifer doesn't do that. He actually goes tier 3 first. Uh, this is largely because he's playing Ghouls. When you're playing Ghouls, you need to get tier 3 lightning fast because you want that Ghoul Frenzy. You want it really bad. Uh, he's also going to go ahead and start the Slaughterhouse next um, because these Ghouls are going to get beat up creeping because uh, he's going to be doing some more creeping without the Death Knight um, in a minute. And uh, so you need the Slaughterhouse for the, some statues to get those uh, guys back up to shape. And basically how he's playing this is he doesn't really plan on using his Lich because he's not going to be picking fights um, until he gets Tier 3. So he's getting the Lich last because that way when the Lich comes out, he'll just be able to buy the Orb of Corruption right away and kind of get to work with that Lich as opposed to having him hang around and not be ready to really go. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue this game here. Uh, this is the last harassing that uh, Lucifer is going to do. You see the Night Elf is about to hit tier two. So what you're doing here is you kind of are hanging around his base because one, you know, uh, he hasn't crept out his expansion yet because you've been on his ass the whole game. And uh, you're basically going to get to either see what his tech is, like here he put down the Ancient of Lore, or you're going to delay his tech, because the Night Elf basically has to decide, hey, do I want to let this asshole see what tier 2 I'm putting up, whether it's going to be uh, Ancients of Wind or Ancients of Lore, or do I want to just wait till he leaves to put him up? And he's going to decide to go ahead and wait till he leaves. Uh, Lucifer is out of mana, he can't really do anything else, so he wisely decides to staff over to his ghouls and uh, go ahead and help them creep out this camp, which is going to get him level 3. So at this point, he's kind of run out of steam. He can't just have the Death Knight run around like five Huntresses and a Keeper of the Grove. Um, so he's gonna, he's just gonna get out of here and, uh, go ahead and creep himself up a little bit to level three, creep out this expansion for later, and, uh, now, like we said earlier, these ghouls are gonna have to go back, get a little bit more lumber, and heal up when this statue comes out. Lich is on the way, obviously, and, uh, the Death Knight is gonna go kind of poking his head around the map again. Um, at this point, he's looking for the expansion. Uh... The thing is that he already knows where the expansion is. So how does he know where the expansion is? It's going to be down here, right? We already saw him building it earlier. Well, he already scouted this several times. He already scouted this. He knew that the Night Elf didn't come back to his base when he was Tier 2 harassing. So the only other place that the Night Elf could have been is across the map creeping out this mine. Uh, he could, I guess, have been trying this gold here, or this uh, red camp, but that would have been pretty difficult and uh, probably a bad idea. So uh, it just kind of was process of elimination. The only other gold mine on the map that it could have been was that one. So Lucifer just kind of pops his head in there, checks it out and says, yep, okay, he does have an expansion. He's not doing some super weird shit. Uh, and now he's getting ready to get out on the map. Uh, another thing to note is Lucifer's already started to make feats. Um, you're not really going to go into, like, gargoyles in this situation. Um, you could, but you really don't have to. Uh, the safer play is just kind of go Ghoul Fiend, um, which is something that's gonna gonna work out pretty well. Uh, he's hit tier three and he's just about to get Ghoul Frenzy. In fact, just started now. Uh, Ghoul Frenzy actually upgrades quite fast, so creeping out this camp is almost just kind of killing some time until uh, Ghoul Frenzy is done when he's gonna be ready to uh, get back out on the map and uh, do some damage with these uh, these frenzied ghouls that he's made. He's gonna run around here a little bit and uh, creep up a couple more camps just while he waits for his upgrades to finish. Um, he's not super worried just yet about what the Night Elf is doing, because um, he can't really have massed up too many Dryads or Fairy Dragons at this point. Uh, but, fortunately gets the Tome of EXP. And now, he finally has this Frenzied Ghoul upgrade, and he's gonna get his Tier 3 hero, uh, the Tinker. See, he runs into Night Elf. Yeah, see, he's got some fairy dragons. 
Uh, there's a you have options for your tier three hero. Um, the Tinker is really good at pushing. Uh, and creeping, and this is an important map to do both. Uh, he's gonna have to run around the map killing a bunch of towers, or a bunch of uh, expansions, and he's gonna want to creep some uh, really powerful camps to get some really good items. So the Tinker, uh, this pocket factory is gonna help him just nuke down this expo, blow it up. Uh, you might be wondering why the Night Elf is just cool with him killing this expansion. Well, he wasn't really ready to fight yet, he didn't have his army quite out yet, he didn't want to deal with the, the frenzied ghouls until he had more fairy dragons, and the other reason is, oh hey, surprise, he's just expanding over here. Uh, Twisted Meadows is one of those maps where the Night Elf is kind of just going to expand all over the place, and uh, there's not a whole lot you can do to stop him. You can kind of go kill the expansions, but that's it. Okay, so we have our first fight coming up. Uh, this is kind of important. Uh, actually, well, it's very important, obviously, it's the first fight. Um, so, if we take a look at the supply, Lucifer has 50. Uh, Lyot has 62. He's, he's quite a bit up on supply here. Uh, likewise, he has a bunch of air, and uh, Lucifer does not have really any fiends yet. He's got, I think, two. Yeah, he's got two fiends, and he should have a web at this point. Nope, still researching web. Uh, so what's the game plan? Uh, like any time you don't know what to do with Undead, likely the answer is run in and nuke the Keeper of the Grove, and that's pretty much what he's going to do here. He kind of thinks about fighting, but then he realizes, eh, this Keeper doesn't really have any protective items, um, so he's kind of just going to right-click on it and nuke it down, and that's pretty quickly going to force the Keeper to get the fuck out of here. So he's able to, uh, to chase him up. Um, you don't really want to take the straight-up fight in this situation while you're banking at 50 food. Uh, there's just not really a whole lot of reason, especially you just killed his expansion. There's just not a whole lot going on that compels you to pick this fight. So don't feel like you have to fight and go all in. Basically what he did right there is he just kind of traded his ghouls. He let his ghouls die fighting. He killed a couple huntresses and uh, forced that TP out of the Keeper of the Grove. And he got himself some map control and some breathing room. So uh, now he'll come over here and he's going to snipe this rock golem before the, the night elf comes back. And it's going to cost him his TP, but that's fine. He's going to get some XP and uh, a really good item out of it into theory. Uh, which one does he actually get? He gets, yeah, Robes of the Magi plus six, so pretty good item, uh, especially for that Lich. At this point, at this point in the game, um, you're about to get level four on the Death Knight. Uh, you're gonna get your Unholy Aura, or as uh, it's so lovingly called, Broken Aura, up to level two, um, which gives you a freaking huge advantage that uh, is, is very unique to Undead. If you've ever played, like, Dota or League of Legends, then you know that for heroes, uh, movement speed is, is key. You always buy boots in those games to, to get your movement speed up. Likewise, even in Warcraft, uh, you have a lot of heroes that very highly contest the boots of speed at the, at the Goblin Merchants. It's because movement speed is something that you can't just get with brute force, right? The Death Knight is the only thing that really just gives everybody free movement speed. Um, I guess the Torn Chieftain, but uh, you don't really get Torn Chieftain level 2 aura very easily in the game. So he's kind of going to just take this, run around the map, creep out the whole damn map, um, and use it to, to not get caught. Because the Night Elf can't force him to sit there and fight. Um, except with Entangle, which he's going to get a solution to very soon. So here we have another situation where the Undead's going to get ready to come creep this Red Camp. He wants this Red Camp. It's a lot of experience. You know, he wants level 5 on the Death Knight. He wants to get his tanker leveled up to three, um, and he, he wants that item. You'll see the item that drops from here he is really nice. Uh, but the, the the night elf is here, so this is the point at which we see the the big weakness of these night elf air armies, right? So you know it's really spooky. You got a whole bunch of fairy dragons. They're hard to kill. They right click and they 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 mess you up. But you know only 300 uh, 300 range. They gotta kind of chase things down. And that leaves you with a uh, situation you can take advantage of. So you can see um, the fairy dragons are going to chase down these statues, and there's really nothing Lucifer can do to keep them alive. But if we take a look at what's going on over here, we kind of see that uh, the Night Elf's army is chasing these statues past the Undead's ground army, and that leaves these Night Elf heroes in a very questionable situation, and Lucifer, he's just going to jump right on it. You're see he's turn around and just blows up this Keeper of the Grove. Keeper throws out the Invul Pot, just barely misses the, uh, the Invul against the Death Coil. But as soon as Lucifer uh, goes ahead, and he does lose these statues, but as soon as the, the Invul Pot runs up, um, Lyot just has to, to get the fuck out of there, or he's going to die. Uh, some of his units miss the TP, but uh, 
they're not really going to do anything. He's pretty much just going to send them home. And uh, this red camp is now Lucifer's for the taking at the low, low cost of two obsidian statues. Uh, how unfortunate. So we're just going to have to replace those. Not a big deal, though, at this point in the game, since he's uh, still banking on 50 food, which he's going to be at 50 food for a very long time. Meanwhile, Lyat, as you can see, has uh, been in low upkeep for much, much of the game at this point. <coughs> so they're both basically just uh, going around creeping high priority camps. Um, let's see what Lyat gets from his. He gets a Flute of Accuracy, which is very nice for uh, for these fairy dragons. It's going to be plus two attack on all these fairies from that uh, True Shot aura. Meanwhile, the Death Knight got a freaking Staff of Silence. Check this shit out. So he basically just got... He didn't even take the Dark Ranger, and he still gets Silence. Uh, these Red Camps drop some ridiculously good items sometimes, uh, and you need to take advantage of it. Uh, it gets Scourge Bone Chimes, which is unfortunately not too useful for uh, for a bunch of fiends, but hey, it'll still help the Death Knight and Tinker, so might as well keep it. And they're kind of running around creeping out the map at this point. Um... As an undead player, this might make you nervous, right? Because the Night Elf is on three bases, and you're on one. <laughs> he's, he's finally kind of starting an expansion over here. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind that it's costing him a lot of money to build these expansions, especially since, you know, the one died. Um, and he's also in, in low upkeep, and you're in no upkeep. So, really... His, his gold income right now is 21, whereas your gold income is 10, which is not insignificant, but... Uh, now let's take a look at this over here. So the Night Elf, this is going to be kind of important. Um, the Night Elf is uh, going to come over here and start doing some harass on the gold mine. So um, this is something that's really frustrating for a lot of people to deal with, is uh, is people jumping over your base to uh, harass you with air. Um, how to deal with that? Well, it's the same thing as, as dealing with like Gargoyle Harass in Mirror or Wyvern Harass in uh, against Orc. Um, or <laughs> Griffin Harass, I guess. You don't see that too much. Uh, but basically, you just got to get a couple spirit towers. It's not that big of a deal. If it becomes a big problem, like he's bringing a lot of air, which fairy dragons don't do that much damage, so they're less dangerous than say wyverns or uh, or you know griffins. But um, then what you do is you get the spirit towers and you you leave like a couple fiends in your base, as few as you can get away with. But that way, every time he comes in, it's guaranteed that he's going to lose something. So it's a pretty big deterrent if you if you get to that point. Um, you don't want to just build, like, one Nerubian Tower. That's not really enough versus these guys. Uh, Lyad is actually going to lose a couple Fairy Dragons over the next minute or two to uh, these Spirit Towers and the, the Black Citadel's damage. Um, and it, it's why you really need about two Spirit Towers to if he has a lot of air and he's kind of committed to it. Um, that's enough of a deterrent to, to make it expensive for him to continue to harass. So you kind of, uh, you kind of get him to go away at a certain point with that. So anyway, we have uh, here, they're going to just miss each other. Um, but Light is kind of thinking, you know, what what the fuck's going on over here uh, with this undead? Because he can see that the undead just started this expansion. Um, so he's going to say, okay, I, I don't want him to get the expansion. So he's going to go deal with the expansion while he multitask harasses with these fairy dragons. And uh, Lucifer is going to say, okay, well, uh, the night elf is... You know, he's, he's a night elf, so he's probably got a, a tree over here, if not one over here and over here, too. Um, so he's he's pretty quickly going to just go down here and beat up on it. Um, I, I missed it, but uh, Lyat kind of walked over here, and uh, Lucifer immediately canceled his expansion that he was building up here, just because there was no way for him to uh, to really keep it alive. And, and same thing over here as well. But he's going to come back and attack this uh, expansion, uh, Lucifer is, and Lyat can't actually TP on this. So you might be thinking, okay, well, if he just TPs, then he's three base for Lucifer's one. And, uh, well, he can't because, remember, the vast majority of his actual army is harassing the undead base. So if he TPs, he's just going to explode and have no TP. So his keeper will instantly die. And um, that's a big threat is... Uh, if they they TP at you, you can potentially snipe a hero because, well, they just use their TP. So unless he has an invul pot or something as well, then that hero is very vulnerable. Uh, so um, it looks like he should just TP down here, but uh, Light actually can't. That would be a, a, a big mistake. So he kind of has to just give up this base and just say, okay, well, I've still got two trees mining gold, so I'm just going to attack the undead. And uh, that's what he's going to do. You'll see he actually does lose a couple of these... Um, to the towers, like I mentioned, but Lucifer is going to get this expansion, and uh, instead of TPing back, which I think is very smart, since he has all these towers, 
His base is actually kind of safe. He lost one Acolyte and he's going to lose like a Crypt. Uh, instead, he's going to get Lyat to leave by attacking Lyat's base and uh, causing him to TP. He's going to make him TP. And since he has this Tinker here, um, that was a fake TP. He's using the staff to try and trick him. Uh, since he has the Tinker here, uh, it's a pretty big threat to Lyat. So Lyat does pretty much immediately pull the trigger and he's going to get the fuck out of there. Although he, again, <laughs> misses for the second time in this game, misses some fairy dragons because they were far away from his keeper and uh, he's going to lose one more to the towers. Uh, okay, so at this point... Um, you're going to continue just sniping expansions. Uh, you see Lucifer, he's just, okay, well, I killed this expo. I guess I'll go check this one out. He's going to send a ghoul over here to scout it out, but he's just going to come down here and attack this because he knows Lyat just TP'd to his base, so he's either going to force him to buy another TP and use it, or he's just going to get this expansion. And because he has Unholy Aura, he's so fast, he can get over here so damn quick, and the Tinker with his pocket factories at level 2 is just going to blow this thing the fuck up. There's just not much to be said about it. When these things explode, they're going to do a ton of damage to this tree. And uh, he could even leave right now and the pocket factory would finish this off, assuming the elf didn't, you know, come by. Alright, so it looks like there's going to be a fight here, but this is, that's not real. That's fake. Um, as the undead at this point, you need an exit strategy because, again, 50 food versus 70. You're down 20 supply just based off the strategy, but you don't really care. Um, or at least Lucifer doesn't. I would be nervous, but uh, he's not. So the exit strategy here is you've got a couple things. First of all, you have web, dispel, and unholy aura. So what you can do is you can kind of force a few of his fairy dragons to leave you alone for a second just by webbing them and running away. You can kind of reduce what he's got chasing you. Second of all, Dispel will protect whatever gets actually web uh, entangled by the Keeper, which is why he has exactly one Destroyer. And third of all, you've got Unholy Aura. So let's take a look at what he actually does here to, uh, to get away from this engagement and actually come out a little bit ahead. So he comes in and gets uh, entangled on this fiend. You're going to see he coils this fiend once. That's like the last time you're going to see a fiend get coiled in this game. So he's running away, but this alchemist is going to poke his head out, and he blows it the fuck up. Uh, so he's lost two fiends at this point. Um, and any time that you stick around in this kind of fight, uh, you're going to lose fiends. There's just no way around it. Like, you know, this one gets entangled, and he doesn't dispel it. He, I, I don't know if he was going for the dispel. He, he dispelled the trance instead. Um, but instead of coiling fiends at this point, you're going to just want to use burrow to protect them because you need to have your coils on hand to protect the lich, the destroyer, and to nuke his heroes. You really don't want to be coiling fiends and fights anymore at this point in the game um, because they just die too damn fast and those coils are, are too valuable elsewhere, specifically on his keeper of the grove's face. Uh, but, you know, he lost three of his fiends there, but he was able to kill the keeper. I was kill, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, kill the alchemist, a couple huntresses, he only has one huntress left, and uh, force the keeper to TP once again. So here we have this fiend, he just burrows it, and there you go. Uh, I do have dust, so he's going to get it. Uh, this is something that, you know, Night Elf players aren't going to be as used to doing, is, is buying dust against you. Um, but, you know, at a certain point, they'll, you know, pick up on it, and they'll start buying dust. But meanwhile, while he's killing that fiend, hey, guess where Lucifer is? He's going to go attack this expansion. Uh, it's pretty pretty much the same strategy that we've been seeing uh, for a little while now. And as you're going to see, he just barely misses the kill on the freaking thing. This is so frustrating. <laughs> but uh, so he TPs out and just barely misses. It's like 36 HP, 26. How cool would that be if he picked up this fucking fiend and, and just sniped that motherfucker with one, uh, one volley from the crypt fiend? But nah, he doesn't get it. That's all right. However, now we have the night elf who's going to come over and uh, attack his uh his base so they're playing expansion tag at this point um you're attacking the elf expansion he's attacking yours uh lucifer gets you know some entangle because he gets out in front of his destroyer he doesn't have his destroyer here anymore um he needs to make another one but uh he he, he doesn't lose the units because he's protecting them um with items you can see he had the uh, invul pot on the tinker there so when he gets the tinker entangled since he can't coil it he went ahead and uh threw that invul potion up and uh lights finally uh actually i think he's using the goblin lab for that isn't he so yeah, yeah he has an ancient war at the goblin lab not dust there we go so uh dust alternative death knight gets really low here but the uh, destroyer comes out in time and, and saves his ass with uh dispel 
Uh, so he's been able to keep his expansion up just kind of by annoying the uh, the Night Elf and playing uh, playing footsies with him. This is like the tier three version of Death Knight harass against a, a like a human creep in their first green camp. You just kind of run in, coil something, run away, run in, coil something, run away. Um, the Night Elf strategy has not changed. He's just going to keep throwing up expansions all over the freaking map. Uh, but that's, you know, pretty much as it goes. Um, the gold mines are getting very low. They're going to run out here in a second. And uh, as long as you have your one expansion secured, you're kind of fine. Um, you see Lucifer's not sending out Acolytes to, like, panic and try and expand again. He's not freaking out about the Night Elf who forgot to rebuild Wisps here. What a dummy. Uh, he's not freaking out about, you know, trying to knock down this elf. No, he's he's happy because uh, he knows, and he's correct, that the Night Elf is kind of running out of gold. Um, he's, he's had to build so many trees and uh, keep buying so many items to, just to keep his freaking heroes alive that, uh, you know, he just doesn't really have a whole lot of steam left in him. Um, whereas Lucifer is finally breaking upkeep. Um, he finally just broke into uh, into low upkeep. And what you're going to do when you break into low upkeep here is you're just going to build a whole lot of goddamn Crypt Fiends. Um, there's really nothing else that you need in your army right now. He's just going to hang out with one destroyer, the two statues, and a bunch of freaking Crypt Fiends because Webb is, uh, is really, really good against these fairy dragons. Um, Webb basically is going to help you kill them, yes, but uh, it's also going to reduce their DPS because... The fairy dragons need to be very close to, to hit things, only 300 range. They really do need to be pretty damn close to, to focus fire things down. Um, the strategy is pretty much you entangle with the keeper and then you just right click with fairy dragons and they can't get away. But it hasn't worked out in this game, Lucifer's been able to, to combat that. And uh, the, the fairy dragons when they get webbed, a bunch of them get webbed, all of a sudden they can't focus fire because they're stuck in place. They can't follow the target together and attack the same target. So you take away kind of the big strength of having a whole bunch of these cheap air units that attack the same thing at once and uh, and just burst it down. Um, you kind of can neutralize that. Uh, other thing to note is um, Lucifer actually went for armor upgrades over attack upgrades. He got uh, one, two. Uh, that's mostly just a, a product of him wanting to not have to deal with uh, dying so fast. Uh, to the fairy dragon folks fire. So he's attacking the elf tree. He's gonna kind of play tag with the uh, staff again and, and fake teleport in here. Um, but at this point in the game, obviously you have to you have to respond when the night elf, and in fact, you see he does get him to back up a little bit here. So he buys himself some time. Um, he's got a TP for real in a second as soon as he kills the tree of eternity, uh, or excuse me, the tree of ages. Um, one nice thing about the fairy dragons is that they can't really kill buildings very fast. Um, so you do have a little bit of time when they attack your base, but we're coming up on what's going to be the final fight here. So we got to talk about how to micro uh, this fight. Um, so basically, you want to do a couple of things. One, like I said, you want to web a whole bunch of the fairy dragons so that they can't uh, do what they want to do. The easiest way to do that is pretty much take your fiends and just push S on your keyboard or whatever your shortcut is for stop because then they will all just auto cast web on whatever they can and they'll just mass web everything that they can. Um, second is you need to protect your heroes. Uh, to do that, you, you know, dispel on uh, entangle. He's gonna entangle the death knight in a second and he's gonna use dispel on the death knight and he's gonna run the hell out of there. You also need items. Um, you can see he's got an invul pot on the tinker. He's got a health potion on the death knight. Ideally, that'd be an invul potion as well, but that's fine. Um, you also do want a mana potion ideally on the death knight because it sucks to, to lose your lich or miss a kill on a hero that you just ran out of mana for coil on. So having an emergency potion is always great. Um, finally, you're going to want to attack... Uh, vulnerable enemy heroes so you can see that the alchemist you know he's pretty safe but this keeper mm, maybe not that safe maybe not so safe um th that's the big weakness of this elf mass air is that there's no ground army that's the reason he has this ogre mauler is because he has no ground units whatsoever he has access he has, he has no tech that's going to allow him to build good ground units. Uh, Night Elf Tier 1 does not scale like Undead Tier 1 does. You can't throw a bunch of Huntresses late game like you can Crypt Fiends. It just doesn't work uh, nearly as well. So he, he really has no good options for ground units. So what that means is that the Undead is free to just walk up to his Keeper of the Grove and beat the shit out of it, uh, which is kind of what you're going to see here in a second. 
Um, again, I said this before, but it holds true now. At this point, at this point in the game, you do not want to be uh, using Death Coil on your Crypt Fiends um, by default. You know, occasionally, there's going to be a situation, obviously, where you should. But um, generally, every time Death Coil is off cooldown, you're going to want to use it either to save this Lich, save this Destroyer, who is kind of a pseudo hero, um, or you're going to want to just throw it at the Keeper of the Grove or Alchemist, whichever one is more likely to die. Um, and that's kind of how you're going to pressure the Knight off. So let's go ahead and slow it down a little and take a look at this fight as it progresses. So Entangle on the Death Knight. Dispel. And Death Knight's going to run away. Uh, don't, do not feel like you need your Death Knight to right-click on things. You do not. Death Knight can sit in the back and just be a, a, a Death Coil bot. Um, it's absolutely fine. So uh, the Fairy Dragons are now kind of in position. You have a couple webbed in the back and one in Mana Burn mode just to fuck with these uh, statues. But, as you're going to see in just a second, he's going to mass web a whole bunch of these freaking fairy dragons. Oh, actually, he kills the he kills the alchemist first. I can't believe I missed that. So he's right-clicking on the alchemist before he does that, because, like I said, you can just kill the heroes. Um, but now, he just webs a whole bunch of uh, these fairy dragons. So now this fairy dragon over here, you think that can focus fire? You think all these fairy dragons can focus fire on, like, this fiend or this fiend? Absolutely not. Um... Is just not going to happen because their range is too short. They just can't do it. So, the fight is pretty much over at this point. The Keeper has had to run away because he doesn't want to die. But these Fairy Dragons, you know, can't do any damage. So they're going to try and right-click on this Destroyer. But as you can see, like, all these Fairies down here... I guess this guy can, but these guys, they can't hit him. Neither can this guy. So the Death Knight coils him. His first coil was on the Alchemist. His second coil was on this Destroyer. And the fight's pretty much over. The game's pretty much over. Um... Light's gonna, you know, kind of do his due diligence here and, and finish this fight out, but uh, the, the game is is well and won at this point. There's no way that he can compete against uh, against this many Crypt Fiends with uh, these undead heroes at this level, so uh, that's gonna be it. So that was the game. Um, in a nutshell, essentially to, uh, to break it down, uh, how this matchup you want to play this out is... Um, you can start with the Death Knight harassing if he goes for uh, Treants and Ancient War Creep level 1 with Archers, that's fine. Um, otherwise, you're going to want to go take that Death Knight and uh, solo creep it. And in fact, you can just solo creep it um, if he does try and creep. But if he goes for a Treants and an AOW creep, uh, the Keeper's going to creep a lot faster than you can at, uh, at the start of the game. Um, whereas if he's trying to harass you, then you actually get an experience advantage. Uh, after that, you want to scout out that Night Elf, kind of figure out what he's doing with his tech. And uh, once you do find out that he is um, going for air, uh, then you can kind of start to plan your machinations while uh, trolling him and killing all his bases. Um, you take that Death Knight, multitask, creep it, uh, send some ghouls out to creep some easy camps while you're harassing the Night Elf uh, during the Tier 2 tech. Kill some Wisps off, slow down his lump production, that'll fuck with his tech. Um, make sure you remember your shopping list at Tier 2. Uh, get Tier 3, and then Lich and Slaughterhouse in uh, kind of preferential order. You can get you can get neither uh, those two in either order that you want, but uh, Slaughterhouse first if you want that statue to heal, and uh, Lich first if you want to get him on the map and kind of creep him up a little bit faster. Um, finally, bring your Death Knight back and uh, creep him up to level 3, and then uh, once you get your tier 3, um, go get your Ghoul Frenzy, start making Crypt Fiends, start transitioning to Crypt Fiends, uh, and then grab your Orb of Corruption on the Lich and go uh, get a Tinker or a Dark Ranger or whatever the fuck you need, um, and start killing his bases, start killing some expansions and force him to chase you around the map. Uh, after that... You will want to bank at 50 supply, uh, don't take the straight up fight, and uh, kind of wait things out, uh, wait for the opportunity to uh, pick off bases, make him chase you around, and rely on the fact that uh, as long as you micro well and get dispels on, um, on the entangles and protect your heroes, he can't force you to fight him, especially on a bigger map like Twisted Meadows. Uh, after that, uh, once you start playing expansion tag with him, he's going to get really frustrated and finally uh, make a whole bunch of Crypt Fiends so you can mass web all of his air and then uh, just nuke the shit out of his heroes and uh, make him rage and complain about undead hero nuke, cheese, QQ, sad, sad. So uh, hopefully you learned something about this. I thought it was a really interesting game. I learned a lot about the uh, Night Elf matchup kind of studying this one and uh, I'm excited to uh, put, some of these, uh, put some of these observations and uh, strategies to use uh, in my own ladder games. Uh, in the future. So this is uh, Drudrick. Hope you enjoyed the commentary replay and uh, see you next time.